While I'm filming content today, I'd like to come on here and talk to you about two different things. One of the things is journaling and another will be cameras in the home. Let's start out with journaling. Journaling is something that I do for work that doesn't involve the care plan on the phone. So when you work for private home health care, on your phone will be an app with the client's name, their address, their phone number, a list of duties you need to perform. And at the end of that, there is a space that you would put care notes in. You would just talk about things that happened that day, factual, private, FOIP if you work in Canada, HIPAA if you work in the States, that kind of information. I keep a journal for information that doesn't go in the care notes. So let's say, for example, I had a family member state something to me that I feel like my agency should know about. I would go to my schedule. I would go to the month, the day. I would write down the time, who it was, what they said. If a client had a one-off experience that maybe doesn't need to go on the care plan, I would write that down as well. I would write down any negative uh, things that were going on in the home that I witnessed that maybe a family member was abusive towards the client. I would write that down, the time, and I would report that to the agency. We have a duty to our clients to care for them in more ways than one. And sometimes that requires us to advocate for them. No need to put that in the clear plan. You're going to journal it. You're going to discuss it with your manager. The second thing I'd like to talk about is cameras in the home. Now, I prefer to work in a home that has cameras for the safety of myself and the safety of the client. I'm not talking about putting a camera in a private area of the home where uh, like, let's say a bathroom or a bedroom where uh, personal care is happening. I am talking about having a camera in a common area uh, pointed towards the door. You can have several. I would prefer them for a couple of reasons. One of them, you can see who's coming in and out of your home. Let's say you have a Parkinson's patient, the family member's coming in and out, you would need a code to get in, and you can see who is coming in and out of your home, what time they get there, what's going on when they are there. Also, even though the camera is not picking up visual things that are happening, they can pick up audio things that are happening. So if there's something going on in another room where the nonverbal client is maybe hitting the caregiver or somebody's being yelled at or somebody's being forced to do something they don't want to do um, you can you can hear that and address it i prefer that if uh, a caregiver doesn't want to work in a home that has cameras that's not the that's not the home they need to be in now i'm not talking about putting cameras in a home where a client is cognitive mobile they can cook for themselves. They just maybe need some companionship or they need a ride to their medical appointment. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about people who need a type of care and maybe they are nonverbal or they're not mobile and they're gonna need uh, a different kind of care. So I prefer cameras. Um, I hope that enlightened you for any information that maybe you didn't think about before. And uh, as a caregiver, you are the whole facility wrapped up in one. So it's important that you keep good notes. Um, as a family member who is hired a private home care for the loved one, uh, think about having cameras in your home just for an added protection for both you and the caregiver. I hope you come back to my page. I have lots more information to share with you.